there! I thought that today I would skip the part of my face and just go straight to business. I was contacted by someone, and I, I'm just not going to mention his name because this deals with fake Mont Blancs. He had a colleague who went to China and he said, can you bring me some pens? He was expecting some Jin Haos and in fact he got fake Mont Blancs. Um, and I've already done a video on how to spot a fake Mont Blanc, but I thought I would, I would try to add a little bit of detail today and, and just show you these pens side by side. Uh, I've called this the Skywalker, clearly an imitation Star Walker. Um, I'm not going to go into detail for all of these, um, but you know, it's, it's decent. This one has a dead giveaway. It says Iridium Point on the nib. Mont Blanc doesn't do that, so as soon as you see that you know it's a fake. I have to say, this especially from the outside, is well made. You have the, the floating star that the, the Star Walkers do. Uh, I don't know if there's a Star Walker with this finish, I kind of doubt it, but, uh, you know, it, it looks like it could be, in principle, a Star Walker. So, it, but uh, there's, um, there's even a, uh, a fake serial number there. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but there's a fake serial number. Uh, and on the inside of the clip, should be the word picks, I think, but it's not. So there, there are some giveaways on this one. Uh, next one, uh, this I've called the uh, Willem Dafoe, because of course this is an imitation of the Daniel Dafoe. Um, a lot of metal. Okay, now a big giveaway, I mean the, the my Skywalker, so the Starwalker is cartridge converter filled, and so is this pen. And as you can see, uh, they even put Mont Blanc on the converter, but it's not a very deep engraving, it's, it's very shallow. It's probably just pressed in there. Now, Willem Dafoe, sorry, the Daniel Dafoe uh, is a, uh, a piston filled pen, but this one's also cartridge converter filled. Fake star on there to make it look Mont Blanc-ish, but this is a fake. Uh, nib is marked Mont Blanc 18 karat 750 annual edition, uh, but fake. Uh, it's the, the markings are there, but as far as I know, and I could be wrong, but I thought the Daniel Defoe was a, uh, a resin pen, and this is metal. Uh, look at the star. If it's off, if it looks off, then it's typically a fake. This doesn't look horrible, but if you zoom, I actually took out a loop for this so I can show you some stuff up close. Um, what you do see if you look at that star, sorry I have to angle it with the camera, is that at the right there where my thumb is, you see that the star isn't very clean. It seems to have some weird marks on there uh, and that is not a Mont Blanc thing. Mont Blanc would, would get that clear and white. Uh, this is supposed to be, I've called this the KFJ, it's supposed to be a, a JFK a knockoff. Um, also, again, a lot of metal. Uh, and this one is actually fancy because uh, as a piston filler, well, there's your piston filler. So instead of, uh, it's supposed to be a blind cap, in here, that's just a converter. Right, so they just inserted a converter, make it look like a piston filler with a blind cap, but of course you can feel it wiggle. Now another thing that's a giveaway here, uh, let me see what this nib, yeah, same nib, it also says annual edition, Mont Blanc, 18 carat, 750, but the engraving, again, let me turn on the light on my loop here, uh, the engraving is very shallow. Uh, sorry, this is kind of hard to do with the camera, uh, forgive me, but... Um, very, very shallow engraving, so I think it's pressed in there, not nicely engraved like Mont Blanc would do. It does have the 4810, the height of the Mont Blanc that the uh, Mont Blanc does put on there. Um, I did not see a serial number on this one, so I guess they just didn't didn't bother. Um, star again, some little bit of stuff on there, um, but okay, nice attempt. Now the best one by far in this batch, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, was one of these two. And one of these is a, a real 146 and the other one is a fake. Now uh, I, I picked this one so as to, to make things a bit more obvious, uh, but this is the real one, this is the rose gold finish, right? This is yellow gold quote-unquote gold, 
um, but I, I, I thought it would be easier for you to, to tell the two apart. But of course there are also yellow gold 146s uh, that just have trims in yellow gold. And then it would really look like this. Now, I have uh, seen quite a couple of Montblancs, and I have to tell you that especially from a distance, this is a tough one to call. Uh, this has a lot of the, the characteristics of a real 146. So if you were to give me this, uh, sort of at first sight, I would probably say, you know, this is not that bad. Uh, this actually is a yellow gold real Mont Blanc. This is a 146. And again, side by side, uh, that's kind of similar. All right, so what exactly makes it different then? Well, there are a few things. I'm going to go back to the rose gold now to, to show you those uh, those differences. Let's start at the top, All right? The very top, you have those two stars. And in this case, I think they both look decent. Um, so here, the star is not really a giveaway. Now, Mont Blanc pens all have serial numbers and they are typically on the ring. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not going to uh, publicize the serial number of the real one, uh, because I think Mont Blanc doesn't really like that. Uh, but what I can tell you is that here, on the fake one, there is a serial number right there. So, on the... there you have it in these, these sort of digital characters, that's exactly the... the we'll call it font, uh, that Mont Blanc uses. Um, but this is a fake serial. There are some pirated serials, they could make something up, whatever. Uh, but if you call a Mont Blanc boutique and you say, I have this pen with this number, they can tell you whether it's a real Mont Blanc. On the other side here is the word Germany. But you may be able to see that, again, this imprint is not at all crisp. It's... it's um, Sorry, I mean, I'm doing this with a camera in a loop. It's, it's really not that easy to, to make this all focus. Uh, there we go. Um, it's, it's, you see the, the top of the Y is actually not even on there. So again, it's a very shallow engraving. That should definitely be a warning sign. And for me, that would be the first warning sign to look at. Is the engraving crisp? Because on a Mont Blanc, um, Again, that's my serial. I don't really want to publicize that, but I, I don't have the, the Germany on this one. Looking at the yellow one. Yeah, okay. So this is the an authentic uh, Mont Blanc. And you see how crisp that is in comparison to the, um, the fake. It's just a much clearer engraving. Okay, we go on. What's next? Well, on the underside of the clip, there's typically some information as well. Uh, I'm just checking mine here, um, and I'm grabbing a, uh, a flashlight because I really need some light to look at this. Um, but the authentic Mont Blanc uh, typically has the word PIX P-I-X, somewhere on the underside of the clip. Um, and the fake one actually has that copied, and it's very hard to show you the underside of the clip uh, on the in the video, but you can see there the word PIX is there, so they have even copied that. Now, the next thing uh, that is interesting is the engraving on the center band. I'm just going to switch off that light. I think it's bright enough. The engraving on the center band uh, says Mont Blanc, Meisterstück, and they took no risk there. They just put picks on there as well. All right. Now the real one says. Mont Blanc Meisterstück, and that's it. Also, the lettering of the engraving on the real one is um, sort of shaded. So the L, of course, this doesn't write because the ink is dried out. Um, I'm exaggerating a bit here, but the L 
has shading marks in it like this. All the letters do. And on the real one, that's very crisp. You see? Whereas on the fake one, those marks are a lot shallower. So again, it's the depth of the engraving that gives something away. Okay, my next test would be to take, and you need a bright flashlight for this, so I'm using my uh, my Olight S2. It's useful in another way too, I'll show you that in a second. Here's the real cap, okay? The cap of the real Mont Blanc. And I put, it's very bright, so I'm just going to put this uh, on here like this. You see that that here, this is red, a reddish sheen. That's what a real Mont Blanc, their, their precious resin, uh, what it looks like. It has a slightly red uh, sheen. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the fake cap. And as you can see, there is no sheen. It's just blackness. So there is nothing to this. Okay, now I, I said this, this flashlight was going to be useful in another way too. I take my real pen and the back of this flashlight has a magnet, okay? So there's a pretty strong magnet there. I hold it to the nib and nothing happens. Uh, this is a gold nib. Uh, this one happens to be 14 karat gold. It's rose gold, but it's still gold. Magnet does nothing, okay? Now, I take the fake one, and as you can see, the nib is attracted to the magnet, all right? It's not a very strong pull, but there is some you know, steel in there that's it's ferromagnetic. The nib itself, rose gold, so what I'm going to do is just take that yellow gold, 146, the real one. You see it's a nice crisp two-tone, and this is the fake one. Again, it's less crisp. The shape is slightly different. It doesn't really look in proportion. This part looks too broad to me. And again, the engraving is much less crisp on the uh, fake one. Uh, if you turn it over, you see a big difference in the feed. Now, Mont Blanc feeds have changed a bit during the years, but this is a real Mont Blanc feed, and this is just a standard, uh, cheaper plastic feed. So that's also a giveaway. And of course, a big giveaway here is the presence of an ink window on all the real Meisterstück pens, uh, the, the piston fillers at least and no ink window on the fake one. So, another big giveaway. Okay, then we have the barrel. Well, I mean, section-wise, as you can see, not really a big difference, except the real Mont Blancs have a sort of a slightly matte ring there, which is part of the nib unit, and the fake one does not have that. The real 146 is a piston filler. I was nearly going to screw that and I shouldn't because there's ink in there. I'll take the yellow gold one. This is empty. Piston filler. You see you twist this end, telescopic piston, you can see the piston in there and then it retracts and that's how you fill it with ink. Now we're going to take the fake one and there's where things really start to fall apart because obviously this is not a piston filler. This is just another built-in converter. All right and not even the, the world's greatest converter at that. It's hard to operate. It, it's, uh, they did go through the trouble of uh, putting Mont Blanc on there again, but yeah, it's, it's not that great. Um, so, from afar, fake and real might not be so easy to tell apart, but once you really sit down, something I even just noticed is that the, the yellow gold on the, the fake one seems to be yellower. This is a nicer, slightly pale gold on the real one. But you see the rings are there, um, the, 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 the PIX uh, engraving is there. Um, I, uh, this one, this is the yellow gold one. Um, I can show you the pics there. You see it there on the uh, right on the inside. I couldn't find it on the rose gold one, um, but <laughs> I do know that's an authentic one. I don't know if in the rose gold they didn't didn't put that in or whatever. In any case, they have it. So that's there. But once you start to study it, it it this to be honest also feels cheaper. It's very light. It 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 feels cheapy. This, I know it's resin, I know it's precious resin, I know it's just plastic, but it's actually heavier and it feels more solid than the fake one does. So there you have it. You have a whole bunch of pointers. 
uh, to be honest, this pen actually writes decently. It's, uh, it's, uh, there's no ink in there right now, but it's slightly stubby. It has a good flow, but it's not a real Mont Blanc. Now, what is the best giveaway of all? If the price sounds too good to be true, then it's probably a fake, right? Uh, if you buy a Mont Blanc in store, new, any model, let's say it's 700 euros new and you see this on eBay for 50 euros and it's the same model, then clearly something is off. If you see it for 100 or 150, I would still be suspicious. Uh, so, and you can ask for pictures, but I mean, you see how much is on there. The pix is there. The, um, uh, the uh, the registration number is there. Uh, a seller could even say, "Oh no 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 no! It's it's a, it's a piston filler." You know, they they but but I mean they have imitated so much, and they've done this so well that it's only when you really start to fondle it and and start to look at it up close, you start to notice it. And there you have it. So just a, a video to to give you some pointers if you're buying a Mont Blanc. Uh, I know they're expensive, but here's the thing. If you really want to make sure you get a real one, go to a Mont Blanc boutique, go to an authorized reseller uh, and, and pick it up there. And if you really want to get a pre-owned one, I've done it too, but you always take a risk. If you can't hold it in your hands, if you buy it online, you always run a risk. And again, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. I should probably steer clear of it. And that's all there's to it. Hope this was useful. Uh, thanks again to the viewer who sent me these. It's just, uh, I hope this has been educational and this way these pens have, have served their, their purpose to at least, you know, educate uh, you all out there. I hope this was useful. I'm glad to see you later.